I'm out and that's all that matters. I don't plan on catching anything big today, but I plan on being out today. So here we go. Now so far I've had one light hit. It was on this pole closest to me right here. Rod, pole, however you want to call it. But I've had one, one hit, didn't take. So I reeled it in to check the bait. And as I was reeling it in, I reeled in a rag. I'm never happy about hooking up on a rag because barbs don't like to come out of rags. <clears throat> Something I normally do when I'm out on the boat, if I'm riding around on the boat and I see a place that I know I can get on the bank at, or that I can wander through the woods to get to or whatever, to get to a place on the bank. When I'm out in the boat and I mark a, a hole or a ledge or something like that, lots of times I'll make a mental note and I'll stand on the side of my boat and I'll cast, see how far it is, how far I can cast to be able to hit the bank or how close I can come to the bank. That way if I wander through the woods and make it to the area that I'm in, then I know it's a whole cast or half a cast or something like that to get to the hole or the ledge that I know that is in the area that I mentally marked on my GPS in my head where it's at. So that's something I always remember. And as you know, my boat is tore down right now, so I would be out on the boat right now, but I can't. So um, that's just a little tip. When you're out in your boat, look for bank look for bank areas you can get to. Bank areas that you know you might be able to wander around and get to that you know where some spots are. So you can use your boat in many ways. Like I said, making notes on places to get to on a bank. What I am using today is a uh, raw shrimp. Still got the shell on it and the tail. But I'm a fan of using bait out of the water. Uh, Again, it goes back to my boat being down. Getting that is, I always keep at least two or three bags of frozen shrimp in my freezer because it's accessible. I can get to it. I can go out for a quick fish if I want to, like I'm doing today. So I can always get to these things. And they, they, they work pretty good at times. Sometimes they're better than others. Uh, but uh, I'm still a fan of, you know, using some, some cut shad, cut bluegill, whatever anything that comes out of the water so uh, it's natural to where i'm at but anyway just kind of wanted to run that across you too so setup we got a slide sinker just a cheap one with a 
rubber bead and I got the main line tied, come down and tied to easy clip. And with the easy clip, you can take your leader right on and off. If you want to change out hooks of a leader that's already made up or something, you can do that. So, just pop this uh, leader right back on. But that there is just a 30 pound leader line. <clears throat> it's actually out of Walmart. It's called the OmniFlex. Seems to be pretty good. I like it. I've been trying, just trying cheaper, cheaper, cheaper stuff for good reasons. We all know catfishing and we like to do things cheap. So, and that's also out of Walmart, a four aught. And I really like it because it's small. It's small and they're very, very sharp and they're great for channel cat. Especially when they're doing these light bites, like right now. So, so I got one right here. just a little guy he's just a little guy but we got him anyway I like to graft the bigger channel cats, but I'm I'm down on a boat, so I have to go where I can go. Another thing I want to show you is the rod that I'm using. Now, everybody knows that I'm a, I like ugly sticks for, especially like on the bank side for these smaller channel caps. So that's an ugly stick, seven footer. This is the old one that don't have the stainless steel eyes. It has the inserts. So this is going down. They got 20 pound slime line on them. And that is called a Cast King White Max. And I really like those. They hold plenty of 20 pound line. They got a, well, I think they're five to one ratio, five, three to one ratio. I just read it, so, but anyway, so I, I, I do like these. For this type of, this type of fishing, for these smaller catfish, for fun. So I wanted to show you again how to load this, uh, how to put these shrimp on. And of course, like I said earlier, I like using shrimp just because I don't have my boat. I can't go out and catch any shad right now. I don't feel like looking for them. So I'm rolling the lazy route. So anyhow, I'll take a piece of shrimp, break it in half, put the main body on, run it shallow, push it down on the hook, slide it up. Then I'll take the tail. The tail's usually got the harder piece of shell on it. And I'll take that half and run it through the harder piece of shell and that kind of locks it onto the hook. It don't seem cold until you stand out here in it for a while in the wind. <laughs> but it's still a good day. We're outside doing something. That's that's what counts. Yeah. Better 
animal. I don't know. This guy here, he might be, might be six or eight pounds or so. It's about a dozen. Feels pretty solid. Oh yeah, he's, he's taking off. Yeah, he's 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 a good guy. Hopefully he don't break off. He got a little lighter hook for him. good channel cat it's a lot better than the last one so there you go nice kitty we're gonna let him go he ran off all catty wampus Four eye, kill hook. They set herself almost like a circle hook. Like I said, I normally use a seven eye uh, K cat tackling cats, but that's what I normally use. But I went a little smaller today just because I know the dinks are kind of coming up a little closer. So that one there just so happened not to be a dink, which is good. That's on our side. So again, you know, just gotta take your time with them. If you get something bigger on because you don't know how we're set at so but they do real good i like them guys a little bit of comparison test now when the when the bite picks up to be a little harder bite when they start hitting a little heavier and just more aggressive I'll end up going back to the hook that I normally use like I said I'm using the smaller one this is the one that I normally use as you can see the difference here it's just a lot smaller but there's a reason why I did that you know because I want you know sometimes they'll just suck on it they won't pull it down they'll suck on it and hold it there so you want it to be able to get in their mouth really good so especially if it's small ones so again I'll show you that's just a, a bronze just a bronze kill hook from Eagle Claw out of Walmart I like them I started using those a while back. I used to use those a lot when I was younger. I quit using them because co hooks were around in catfishing a lot longer before a circle hook ever was. So uh, a lot of younger guys sometimes don't know that. They think circle hooks has always been in catfishing. What has it? You know, that's what that's the way you rolled back in the day. If it wasn't just a J hook or something. So so I recently went back to the smaller one. Like I said, that's what I normally run. So when the bite picks up, things start being a little bit more aggressive, then I'll get back to that.
here's something else I wanted to share with you guys. Now, I just started doing this. This ain't something I've always done, so don't think it's something I've always done, but I found it easier to do this. So, at Walmart, you can buy these little things here for, I think, 11, 12 bucks or something. And you got all these plastic things in them. And what I did is, is I'll take stuff that I use and just put a couple packs of each thing that I'm using for my terminal tackle inside of this stuff. And then that'll be all my main gear. You know what I mean? So, and then I'll save a few of these in the back to make up pre-made rigs, as you can see. So that's a pre-made rig. That's one with nine knot circle hooks, one with a seven knot circle hook, you know, one with a um, 10 knot circle, uh, K, uh, K cat, there's a seven knot K cat, and so on. So, you know, it's just, it is easier to do it this way. So that's what I started doing. And I can carry a smaller pouch here. This is actually a hip pouch. You go right around your hip. So I set this bag down in it. And I got my knife on it. Got me some. Like I said, I'm just I'm on the bank. So this is like just load up and go real quick. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I just get this done up. Check the poles back here. Make sure ain't nothing going down. And I can just, just, here's a pretty big bag, so I can just put it right inside of this. I can zip it right up shut. Put some sinkers, extra sinkers in here, just so it ain't too much weight. I don't want to carry around 500 sinkers. If I'm doing a tournament or something, I carry, I take everything I have. So not everything I have, but I carry a lot bigger assortment. You know, just a knife to carry with me, a couple of bobbers if I wanted to set up something to float some stuff with. It's just basic standard stuff. Wires. So it works for me. Like I said, this is just a hip pack. It goes right around you and snaps on. Then you can just, you ain't got to carry it. It's one less thing you got to carry along with your rods and rod holders and stuff like Again, that. Again, I was in a spot earlier that I was telling you guys I used to go by in the boat and I look at spots. This is another spot. This is more open. Probably more people probably would come here. I like trying to go to places that people don't go to. It just makes me feel like I'm fishing more, doing something more natural than going somewhere where everybody goes. I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't like doing that. So I try to avoid public main chains of where people bank fish. I, I try to stay away from it and do my own thing. <laughs> 